Hey everybody, this is Rust Metro Game Core, and this here is my Odin 2. And you've probably heard of it and seen it if you watched any of my other videos. I've had this thing for about five months now, and it has become my primary handheld, even over stuff like the Steam Deck. And in the time that I've owned it, I've done quite a few upgrades to it, and so that's what we're going to focus on in this video. The first thing I did is I swapped out the buttons with another Odin that I already had. So I changed out the black buttons from the blue model and put them in my white model. And of course, on the opposite end, I put my white buttons into the blue model, and I really like the look of that one. I really like the mid to late 90s retro aesthetic of the transparent blue with the white buttons. And initially, I was really happy with the setup. I thought that the black panda kind of look on my white device looked very nice. However, as time went on, I thought it needed a little more pop of color. So the next mod that I did is I swapped out those buttons for colored rainbow buttons instead. So that gave it an aesthetic that was more similar to the European Super Nintendo. From there, I did one more mod, which was to change out the analog stick, especially on the left side with something a little bit taller and larger. And so in this video, I'm going to walk you through the entire process. I'm going to show you where to get these accessories to add them to your Odin 2. And then I'll show you the tools necessary to get all this done in the first place. And then of course, we will tear our device down, put in the mods and walk you through that process as well. In the end, the Odin 2 is so good that I don't think it needs any of these mods, but it is definitely enhanced my my gameplay experience and so I thought it was worth sharing. And so kick back, grab your favorite snack and drink, and let's do these mods together. Without any further delay, let's dive in. Okay, let's start with the saga of my two Odin 2s. Now, initially, AYN sent me out a review unit. It was transparent blue. However, I didn't realize that at the time, and so when I ordered my own model, I also ordered a transparent blue. And so as a result, I had two different blue models, and so I traded one out for a white model with somebody else who was looking for a swap with a blue model. And so that's how I've ended up with two different models, one white and one blue. And I do have plans for this blue model, we'll talk about it later on in this video. Now obviously swapping the buttons here is very simple because I have two Odins, so I'm just going to swap them out one for one. But if you are looking to do a button swap, then I would recommend going to the AYN website, which I will have linked down below. There they have an accessories tab, and here they've got a bunch of different stuff that you can buy, including a carrying case, a screen protector, and even a dock for your Odin 2. And of course, they also have some modding accessories available as well. Now, this isn't an all-in-one package. You'll kind of have to piecemeal it together, so we'll start with the A, B, and X, Y buttons. These are going to be $3 plus shipping, and you have four different options. In addition to the rainbow and black buttons, they also have purple buttons. These are modeled after the US Super Nintendo. And they've also got white buttons as well. Of note, as of right now, the rainbow buttons are sold out, so they're in kind of high demand, and so just check on this website and see whether or not they come back in stock. Now additionally, there are two other sets that we need to buy, and these are about $10 each. We'll start with what they're calling the Odin 2 Full Button. Here is going to include the D-pad, the Start and Select buttons, and then your Home and Back buttons for Android. We've got three different color options here. We have black, white, and then what they're calling dark gray. I think in particular, these are probably going to match the best with the Super Nintendo purple buttons. Going back to the main accessories page, there is one other thing that we need to check out, and that's called the Odin 2 Repair Kit. Now, this has more stuff than we actually need. It's got the full controller boards, but what we're looking for here are the shoulder and trigger buttons. And like with the other full button set, these come in three colors, black, white, and gray. So all told, we're looking at about $23 to buy all of these accessories plus shipping. And I would also recommend that while you're there, pick up a couple of the Hall joysticks as well. You never know if you're going to like misplace or break one of these, and so I think it's worth the $4 to pick some of these up. Anyway, I'll leave the Odin site link down below, but that's essentially all you need if you're only going to be doing the button mod. Next, let's talk about the tools that I used in my own adventure. And it's really only one thing, it's the iFixit Pro Tech Toolkit. I got this a few years back for Father's Day, and I have loved every minute of it. I've used this thing so many times. There are definitely cheaper options out there, but this one feels like it's going to last a lifetime. For this mod in particular, we have quite a few options, including these plastic guitar picks, which will really help when you're trying to open up the case. In addition, there's a plastic spudger in here that has a flat end on one side and a pointy end on the other. This one's really great when you're trying to undo ribbon cables, or just trying to wedge something out. And of course, the star of the show will be the precision screwdriver kit that we have here as well. In particular, there's going to be two different screw heads that you're going to want to use. The first is going to be a Torx T5 screw, and this one will be used when you're opening up the back case. For all the other screws inside, they're going to be a Phillips head, but very small. And so I recommend using the smallest screwdriver. That one worked the best for me. Anyway, in addition to the toolkit, there are a couple other things that I use. The first is going to be just a cheap microfiber cloth to make sure I don't damage anything as I'm 
working. In addition, in order to keep the analog sticks from pressing into the table, I used something to elevate it as well. I used to use an old deck of playing cards, but nowadays I use this case from D Brand's Steam Deck Thumbstick Grips. And that's a mouthful, but this little case is like the perfect size for me, but if you have a deck of playing cards, that works too. And this is great because it'll keep the device elevated a little bit so your thumbsticks don't damage your table. Other than that, the only other thing I recommend is going to be a microfiber cloth because you will probably be getting your screen pretty smudgy and you may want to wipe that away. Anyway, that's really about it when it comes to tools, so let's get started in the teardown. We're going to start with the transparent blue model. Like I mentioned, there are Torx T5 screws on the back. There's going to be four of them all together in the four corners. From there, you're going to want to use a plastic guitar pick to go around the edges to unlatch all of the clips around the sides of the case. I've had the best results by either going from the very bottom near the headphone jack or from the very top near the shoulder buttons. Either way, it might take some time the first time you do it because the Odin 2 is really tightly screwed. Anyway, once you're done with that, you can pull off the back. There are going to be two back buttons that'll fall out, but other than that, it's very simple. There are no wires attached or anything else like that. And now that we have the back open, let's take a look at the inside. And the process is going to be very similar on either side, and you kind of have to take it one bite at a time. The first thing you want to take off is the rumble motor that it's also attached to the LED strip on each side. And what you'll want to do is put each of these in their own little pile. From there, I will usually undo the speaker. Now, this is just lightly attached using an adhesive. And you don't really have to unplug it or anything. You just kind of have to move it out of the way once you've unscrewed it. From there, you'll want to take off the analog trigger housing. This is also three screws. The thing to be careful about this one is that there's a magnet right there. And so your screws will likely stick to it as you're pulling them out. After that, we have two screws holding on the analog stick housing. And I also recommend taking those out. And it's going to be the same process on each side. And once you've done that, then there's going to be three or four screws holding down the entire control board. And it'll look a lot easier once we take off these other accessories. So let's go ahead and start doing that now. And I'm going to kind of speed this up as I go through just because doing this in real time would take quite some time in a video. But trust me when I say that they've really well compartmentalized everything. And so it's pretty easy to take this apart. So here I am taking off the LED strip and then next we'll take off the speaker. Like I mentioned, this has a light adhesive to it, but you can just kind of pull it right off. From there, we can take off the analog stick housing and just be wary of that magnet. It's not a big deal either way. It's pretty easy to get the screws out if they do get stuck. Of note, there are also three different ribbon cables that you'll have to unlatch. One at the top, then one at the very side, and then a larger one that's for the controller board. You can use a plastic tool or your fingernail to unlatch them. From there, you're going to unscrew your analog stick housing, and then after that, you can undo the controller board and then pull it right out. And there we go, we're already halfway done removing everything on this one side. So let's move over to the next side. And same thing here, it's a very similar process. This time I'm going to do the speakers first, then the LED strip. After that, we can do the analog triggers, then the analog stick housing, and then of course that controller board one more time. And sure enough, we'll zoom in one more time just so you can see what it's like when it's fully disassembled. And thankfully, we don't have to mess around with things like the battery or the CPU. None of that stuff is going to get messed with. Now, for the sake of redundancy, I'm going to really speed up now so we can go through the same process but with the white model. And there's no difference between these at all other than the colors, so the process is going to be exactly the same. But through the magic of television, I'm going to fast forward, and here we are. Now let's do a full disassembly of all the other buttons. So we're going to start with these shoulder buttons. These are super simple. You can just take them right out. And then if you'd like, you can just kind of flip it over, and everything else is just going to fall out into place. That's going to include the D-pad, the face buttons, as well as the start and select and Android buttons on the front. So this is what it's going to look like once you've removed everything. Now if we wanted, we could go really deep into this and even change out the volume button. This is something that will come with one of those kits as you buy them. However, if you flip it over and look at the other side, you can see that you have to remove the battery to actually get in there. And I think that this is just a little bit too complicated for my tastes. And so while it might complete the set to get a black volume button with my device, I don't really mind it being white and I don't think it's going to be worth that effort. Anyway, that's all going to be up to you and whether or not you want to go that extra mile. But if you're just doing a very light and easy mod, I would recommend maybe not doing it. So let's go ahead and start adding everything in, starting with the transparent blue model with the white buttons. If we're looking at the left side of the console or the right side as we're looking at it here, you're going to want to put in the D-pad, then your select button, and then the Android home button. After that, take your LED diffuser from the analog stick housing and then put it into that shell. It can only fit one way, so it's really hard to mess up. 
Once you have that in there, you can put in the controller board along with the analog stick. And at this point, I would recommend attaching the ribbon cables because it's gonna be harder to do that once you've screwed it in. Once you have your cables reattached, then go ahead and put in your analog stick and then screw that and the controller board into place. And at this point, everything should fit pretty securely. So you can flip it over and have a look and see whether or not it's gonna be a good fit for you. I would also test out the buttons just to make sure there's nothing in the way and that they're all seated properly. And really that's about it for the left side. So let's go ahead and wrap it up by adding the speaker. And then we can also add our bumpers and triggers. And much like how it was a little bit tricky to take this apart, it's gonna be a little bit weird when you're doing the analog triggers as well. And that's because the screws are gonna to wanna to stick to that magnet. So just make sure you do it really carefully. And then finally, we'll add the LED strip. Make sure that you plug it into its proper slot. And then we just need to screw it into place. All right, good job. We are now halfway done with our reassembly. Let's go over to the other side now and do this one. The process here is gonna be very similar. We'll put in our start button as well as our Android back button. And then we'll drop in our face buttons. Now each of these have a little piece of plastic to put them in the correct slot. So again, it's almost impossible to get this wrong. After that, you wanna put in the rubber membrane, make sure that the black side is facing up and it has these little pegs that you can push the membrane into. And they've made this very thoughtfully because there's only one way to do that. And same thing with the LED diffuser from the analog stick. It's only got one place to go. And after that, we're ready to do the reassembly. So we'll put our controller board in as well as our analog stick housing and make sure that all your ribbon cables are clear when you start putting the board in. From there, attach your ribbon cables and screw it together. And let's screw in our speakers and then take a look at this side as well. And yeah, sure enough, this is what the buttons are gonna look like on the right side as well. I think that this is a really nice setup. In fact, the transparent blue color looks a lot better than I expected it to with these white buttons. All right, let's wrap this up. We're gonna put in the LED strip and then our right bumper, and then finally our right analog stick housing. Again, be careful about those magnetic parts. After that, we're ready to do the final assembly. So we're gonna put the back case on and then put those back buttons on there as well, and then just gently place the Odin on top and then snap it together. After that, we can screw in our torque screws and we are now good to go. And yeah, I'm really happy with how this looks and everything feels great as well. Okay, next we will reassemble the white model. It's gonna be exactly like how we just did it with the transparent blue model, but obviously with different color buttons. Either way, the process is the same, and so I'm not gonna bore you with all this footage. I'm just gonna kind of fast forward until we get the finished product. The biggest thing here is just kind of take it in segments and take your time. There's really no rush here at all. Personally, I like to turn on some music and just kind of enjoy the experience as I'm doing it. It usually takes me about 20 minutes altogether to fully tear down and reassemble an Odin 2. But I think if it's your very first time around, I would set aside at least an hour just to make sure that you have plenty of time and no sort of stress. And my biggest piece of advice is to not force anything. If something is not fitting, there's probably a reason for it. This should be a very light mod all across the board, so you don't wanna break any of these components as you're getting in. Anyway, here's a look at my black model, what I'm calling the Panda Edition because of the black and white. And again, I think this one looks really good as well. I kinda miss the clean aesthetic of the full white console, but all the same, I think it looks great. So let's go ahead and close it up with the back compartment and now we're ready to go. And so this is what both models look like after going through and doing our button mod. And I think they both look great. They're a little bit unique in the sense that they don't look like anything on the AYN website. And it's pretty cool that we were able to do this in such a simple way as well. Now, when I have the devices off and I'm just kind of looking at them, I think I actually like the transparent blue model better. Like I mentioned in the intro, it kind of reminds me of like a mid nineties device. And so I really like that feeling. It's kind of unexpected and a little bit cheesy, but I kind of like it that way. Now, to be fair, once I have the device turned on, I like it a lot less. And that just really comes down to my own personal preference. But I think that the LED lights on a transparent model like this are just a little bit too strong. Even if you turn down the brightness, it's still a little bit too much. But again, this might be something that you find to be very cool. And so no judgments there. It's just not something that I personally dig. In fact, when you put them at their lowest brightness and in a dark setting, it does look pretty neat. Again, it kind of goes towards that mid-90s vibe. But for me personally, I definitely prefer the subdued LED look of the white model. I like the fact that it's more opaque and it just kind of shines through a little bit. So I think when all things are considered between the two, I do prefer my white model because of those LED lights. All the same, I think that these both look really great. And like I mentioned before, I do have plans for this transparent blue model. It's been a while since I did a charity auction and auctioned off some of my old devices, but this will be included in the next round that I do. So be sure to check out my next charity auction round. I'll be sure to post it on social media when it goes live. It'll be up for a week and the bids will start at a dollar and there'll be no minimum at all. And 50% of the proceeds will go to charity and the other half goes to my wife who does all the work behind the scenes in taking the pictures and boxing it up and all that other stuff. Either way, yes, between the two, I decided to keep the white model and that mostly had to do with the RGB lighting. But like I mentioned, I felt like it needed a little bit more color pop. 
And so flash forward a few weeks later, I went onto the AYN website and bought some buttons of my own. I grabbed the rainbow ones and the purple ones, so we're going to test those out next. Now disassembly here is going to be exactly how it was before. The only big difference is I only have to do one side because we're going to be changing out the buttons. And of course, we need to make sure that we get all the buttons in the correct spot. Like I mentioned, the plastic is formed in a way that you really can't mess this up, but just make sure that you're careful as you do it. And so here's what the rainbow ones look like, and these by far are the winner for me. And I think part of this stems from the fact that I was always jealous of this color scheme on the European Super Nintendo. And so now I can make it my own, which is pretty neat. Anyway, let's do the same with the US Super Nintendo buttons, and yeah, these look pretty great too. But I do think that this color scheme would look better if I had gray buttons and analog sticks, so I don't think it's a perfect match with my black buttons, so we're going to go back to the rainbow ones. But all the same, I'm glad I spent the $3 on these buttons just to check them as well. Anyway, putting it all back together, yeah, I'm super happy with the setup having those rainbow color buttons and then the black buttons for everything else. I think the black buttons are an excellent contrast to the white color scheme altogether, and then those rainbow skittle buttons just really kind of bring it all together in the end. Okay, so that's half of the mods that we did for this video. The next are going to be analog sticks, and this is actually a very, very easy mod. And that's because the analog sticks are detachable on the Odin 2, so swapping them out is just a matter of pulling them off and then putting the new ones on. And these stick mods are going to come courtesy of an Etsy shop called Slugs Workshop 3D. I heard about these on Reddit, and I was really impressed, and so I picked up a pair myself. Now you've got three different shape options. They have one called Concave that's going to be very similar to an Xbox Series controller, and they also have one called Domed, and as you can imagine, and this one's going to have a more dome or rounded shape. And then finally, there's a hybrid option. This one is going to have a dome top, but then that same rim around it like the concave one. And you've also got a number of different colors to choose from and the option to mix and match them if you'd like. I'll leave a link to all this stuff in the video description below, and luckily the seller actually sent me all three models so I could test them in this video. So let's go ahead and do a quick showcase of each of these different styles. I'm just going to pick them at random, and the first one that I grabbed is the hybrid model. Like I mentioned, these ones have a grippy texture around the sides and then a little bit of a dome shape at the top. Now one thing to bear in mind, these are 3D printed, and so the grips themselves are a hard plastic. So the grips on this are very grippy, especially compared to something like an Xbox controller which has rubberized caps. So if you are looking for something that's somewhat soft, these are not going to be the grips for you. But me personally, I like something being very grippy and tactile, and so I do really like this combination. If we take a look at a side-by-side -side comparison with the original Odin 2 caps, you can see that there is a big difference in the stick height. Not only that, these new sticks are quite a bit wider. I think they are the actual size of an Xbox controller sticks. Let's look at another pair. These are the concave ones. So these are almost identical to an Xbox series controller. And I do like the fact that they have a little bit of a concave shape to them if you're used to that kind of style. And if we do a direct comparison between these and the hybrid ones on the left, the left one kind of reminds me of a PlayStation or maybe an a Bado controller because those ones do have a little bit of a convex bump. And as a quick comparison, yeah, it looks like they're maybe a little bit smaller than Xbox Series controller sticks, but still very, very similar. Okay, and then finally we have the domed ones, and these ones have a smooth texture to them overall. And again, just keep in mind, these are 3D printed, and so it's a little bit grippy just because of the material that they use. But all the same, it's much smoother and sanded down compared to the other grippy sticks. Anyway, when it comes to installation, it couldn't be easier. All you have to do is pop off the old ones and then pop in the new ones. Just bear in mind that there is a specific shape within the connector so make sure that you've lined it up correctly. We'll start here with the concave or Xbox style ones first. And these feel pretty good. You can definitely feel the outer rim and the texture there. But for my own taste, I don't think this is a perfect fit. It almost feels like the center part is just a little bit too slippery because it's so concave. Usually that's not a big deal because they're rubberized on an Xbox controller, but because this is a hard plastic, it feels a little bit more slippery than I would like. So even though I do think this is an improvement over the original Odin 2, I don't think this is going to be the best among the three that we're going to be testing. Either way, I love the fact that we have a full range of motion and the added height as well. It just makes it feel a lot more precise as you're using it. And if you bear in mind that I don't really consider the Odin 2 to be a pocketable device, I don't mind that the analog sticks are a little bit higher. I don't mind making it a little bit less portable, but having that added precision. Now looking at that right analog stick, one of my concerns about making these higher was that it might get in the way of the face buttons. And sure enough, using these elevated sticks, it is definitely something that I can feel if I'm going to be focusing on using face button gameplay. So for something like Super Mario World, this is not going to be a great fit because the stick does kind of get in the way. So in that regard, if I'm playing retro games or something that's more left analog stick focused, then I probably would just use the regular Odin 2 cap. And it's great that we can just swap between these two very easily. In fact, it's almost a perfect fit with my preferred case for the Odin 2, which is this soft case from TomTalk. 
This was originally made for a Nintendo Switch, but the thing I love about it is that it has a zipper pocket. So what I can do, depending on what analog stick I'm going to be using and not using, I can just put them in there and not have to worry about them getting lost. Anyway, I love this case. I've talked about it a lot with my other Odin videos, but I will also leave this link down in the video description below. Anyway, when it comes down to it, yes, I like these elevated sticks on the left side, but I don't think the concave one is going to be the best fit for me. So let's switch it out for another one. Let's try the hybrid one just because I'm kind of in the mood to use something really grippy. And sure enough, yeah, I think I like this one a lot more. Not only do I have those nice tactile grippy sides, but that extra convex bump at the top gives me a little bit more to press down on as well. So for me, I think that this hybrid version is the best of both worlds. That being said, I don't want to leave the third one behind, so let's test out the domed one just to be sure. And this one feels nice and smooth and has a very fluid kind of motion to it. But as I suspected, I probably would prefer to have this with a more rubberized grip. And so I do feel that my thumb is slipping a little bit more than I would like, and so I don't think this one is a great fit for my own playstyle as well. Either way, it's great that we have three different options to choose from, but for my own tastes, I'm definitely going with the hybrid one. And it's pretty surprising for me because I think the one that I originally purchased was the Xbox style one, the concave one. And so I really appreciate this store sending me all three models to test in a video because now I know which one I like the most. And I love the added height with this whole experience. If we compare it directly to an Xbox Series controller, you can see that they both stick out from the case about the same amount. And so it's been about two weeks now that I've been using these analog sticks and I've been having a great time. I've been using them in two different ways. The majority of the time I just use the hybrid stick on the left side and then the original Odin stick on the right. This allows me to play Mario 64 or any other left analog stick centric game with a lot of increased control. And so I've been really enjoying this setup because it feels just a lot more console like to me. And then because I'm using the stock analog stick cap on the right side, none of this gets in the way of using the face buttons. Of course, if I need to use the right analog stick to like move a camera around or whatever, I can totally do that as well. But I do like this more hybrid experience of having the face buttons readily accessible, but having a larger left analog stick too. Now, when it comes to playing a dual analog stick game, this is where I start to shake things up. And all I really do here is just pull off the Odin 2 analog stick cap and then put on another hybrid one. And I think this works really well when doing game streaming. For example, when playing Destiny 2, this feels a lot more natural for me, considering the fact that I mostly will play this game with an Xbox controller. And because I have that zip up case that I carry around with my Odin 2, I can always swap out my sticks without worrying about losing them either. So in the end, if you're looking for extra control, then I think that these extra analog sticks for $12 are well worth it. As far as which model to buy, I'm gonna leave that up to you, but for me personally, I think the hybrid one is the best of the bunch. Now, in addition to sending me all of the analog sticks to test out, the person behind this Etsy store also sent me a couple new prototypes that they're working on. And they did give me permission to show this off, but just be aware that these are not the final build and they're not available for sale just yet. Either way, these are pretty exciting. These are magnetic buttons that are swappable for the Odin 2. So the idea here is that you will put the base into the Odin 2 and then you can swap out the top buttons as you would like. As of now, we've got A, B, and X, Y, and PlayStation pattern buttons, which is pretty cool. And the installation process is going to be a breeze, especially if you swapped out the buttons before. It's literally just the exact same process, but putting in these 3D printed ones instead. Once you've got it put together, this is what they're going to look like. They're basically holes that have a magnetic connector. So these are great for several different reasons. The first being that if you want to swap out the A, B, and X, Y pattern, you can do that very easily. For example, the default A, B, and X, Y pattern on the Odin 2 buttons have the A button on the right side, like a Nintendo Switch. But if you're playing something like Xbox streaming or maybe a Dreamcast game, you're going to want them the other way around. And using these magnetic buttons is as simple as just swapping them out. Now, like I mentioned, these are just test buttons and the shop that sent them over to me just really sent them over for testing. And so I did test them out and I had a little bit of feedback for them as well. And they all feel great, but the only miter feedback that I had is that the rightmost button does stick out quite a bit. And that has to do with the shape of the Odin 2 and not necessarily the button. And the seller is 100% aware of that and they are working on a solution, but it's definitely an uphill battle because if you want to have the ability to swap them out, that does mean that the buttons are all going to have to be uniform in shape. And so, for example, if we want to swap this out to the Nintendo Switch layout with the A button on the right side, now it's going to be the A button that juts out just a little bit. And so the seller is working on a solution for that, and I have confidence they're probably going to figure it out because they've been doing a really great job with these other accessories. And I think it's awesome that we're able to swap out the A, B, and X, Y pattern. Even better, if you want to play, say, for example, PS1 or PS2 or even PS Vita, you can swap them out for the PlayStation buttons as well. And same thing here, it's a very simple swap. And these buttons are pretty well secured in there as well, so I have no 
fear of them dropping out. In the end, I think it's a wonderful project and I hope they keep going with it, but for me personally, I'm just gonna go back to my rainbow colored buttons. Part of that has to do with the fact that I just love the little pop of color, but then also that rightmost button is just a little bit more uniform. And really, that's kind of about it for this video. It's a pretty simple mod process. It's a matter of just kind of tearing it down and then swapping out the other components. In particular, I'm very happy with this left analog stick mod because it gives me increased control. And of course, I love the pop of color in my face buttons now as well. And given the fact that the Odin 2 is so popular right now, I expect to see even more mods in the future too. So let me know what you think about these mods. Are they going to be worth it for you to swap out all of your buttons or maybe just the face buttons? And what do you think of these analog stick caps as well? I'll leave links to all this stuff in the video description below if you want to try it out yourself. And if you're wondering whether or not I think it's worth it, I think that yes, all of these mods are totally worth it. I love the idea of personalizing my device, and the Odin 2 feels like a handheld I'll be using for years to come. As always, thank you for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming!